Snart är veckans slut här i San Diego på konferensen Toward a Science of Consciousness. Och det har varit väldigt intensivt och väldigt, väldigt intressant. Vi har mött fantastiskt inspirerande människor som alla brinner för samma sak. Och det är consciousness, medvetenhet. Medvetenhet har ju i princip varit bandlyst från forskningen i flera hundra år. Och idag så är det många, många, många högt uppsatta forskare som ser att medvetenheten är förmodligen den mest potenta potentialen i skapandet av verkligheten. Och man ser det väldigt, väldigt många bevisade experiment, och det säger till alla vetenskapsmän i Sverige, bevisade experiment. Att medvetenhet har en väldigt, väldigt, väldigt stor betydelse i allting. Vi kan se det inom neurofysiologi, vi kan se det inom biologi, vi kan se det i många, många, många vetenskapliga experiment. Att medvetenhet är faktiskt någonting som är riktigt. Det går till och med att mäta. So when you look at this, you don't you think that's an object there, but actually this is a process of perception in your consciousness, right? We have experiences in consciousness that are in the form of sense perceptions. Sense perceptions are modifications of consciousness, but then we objectify it as the objective world. In fact, there is no objective world. The world exists in you. In the East, uh, the concept exists in um, great amount, in considerable amount of literature. Although modern Easterners don't believe much in it either. For a long time, we have been guided by scientific materialism. Somehow, I thought that consciousness is something we need to understand before we can understand quantum physics. I feel that we need to improve the study about consciousness uh, in the planet. And each one need makes it part. And in my experience, I decided to study about consciousness uh, in a balanced, in a balanced with the practice, not only to study about consciousness, but I create time, create time to practice everything what I study, what I say. Defining consciousness can be a problem. We all know what it is, you know what it is, I know what it is. It's our everyday experience of being aware, feelings, joy, emotion, pain just having experience, but defining it can be a problem. There was a conference, for example, that attempted to define consciousness on the opening day before they explained it. By the end of the week, they were still arguing over definition. The whole universe exists in you, but you not as a body-mind, you as that in which even the body-mind is an experience, the field of pure consciousness, awareness, etc. The real worldview shattering question, of course, is that what is the ground of being? Is it matter? This is the conventional view of scientific materialism. Every experience that we have, including the experience of consciousness, is arising from matter. So consciousness is brain phenomenon, according to the neuroscientist, according to the cognitive psychologist, according to any scientific materialist. Human condition itself disconnects us a lot. What happens is that, um, especially under scientific materialism, people really are disconnected today. The reason that many people suffer from depression. Uh, it's basically uh, having awareness, experience, but these are all words. It's subjectivity, it's first person point of view, it's being aware, cognizant, it's having experience, as opposed to information processing that could occur in a computer without consciousness. Nowadays, we are needing a balanced society. But although we are seeing conflicts, individual conflicts, depression, suicide, uh, corruption, violence, and promiscuity society, these things show us that we need to improve our consciousness to choose, choose another way to 
live. Then that's the reason that we create in 2002 one subject in the university. The name is Conscientiology. We study the consciousness. Conscientiology is the study of consciousness. Then we include this subject in 14 universities in Brazil. And we teach this subject for 1,438 people, students, and we can see, we can prove that these people, their study consciousness has nowadays uh, better conditions to conduct their lives. And it's uh, the best present that the consciousness can give for us. Det har varit väldigt, väldigt inspirerande för när människor har någonting som de både upplever och bevisar är sant så finns det ett enormt engagemang. Det är inte några karriärister som ska då bli karriärister inom vetenskap och hålla sig inom dogmen, inom ramen utan det här är människor som verkligen vill bryta gränser som verkligen vill forska på riktigt för mänsklighetens bästa för oss människor. Det är väl därför vi betalar skattepengar till forskare eller varför betalar vi forskare som inte vill någonting, som är, kanske bara vill sin egen karriär? Är inte forskningen någonting som ska vara till för mänskligheten? Något som ska komma alla till gang? Någonting som ska skapa något gott? Någon, en utveckling för oss människor? Istället för att begränsa oss. Så här känner jag verkligen att det finns en möjlighet att titta in lite grann i framtiden vad som kommer. För här är forskarna som verkligen vågar vara i framtiden. There's no matter. Matter is the interpretation of this. But this is an yeah. experience, right? Yeah. What is the experience? Hardness. Yeah. What is the experience? Uh, color. What is the experience? Shape. Now, that's the experience. When we give a construct to the experience, then it's an object. Materialistic science doesn't really reject, it can't explain it. Okay, as long as you have a physicalist ontology, it's impossible to explain how photons going to your brain right now. That's all that's going, right? It doesn't matter what the experience is, the sound of my voice, the experience of visual image of my body, a taste, a smell, a thought, all that goes to your brain. All that happens in your brain is electrochemistry. We call that neural correlates, but it doesn't explain this experience, this experience, this experience, any experience. No, we generate, as consciousness, we generate experience. And the experience is sensations, images, feelings, thoughts, sense perceptions, which are modifications of consciousness. So consciousness knows itself as this, as this, as all this and also as mental activity. They're all activities of consciousness. Consciousness is that in which all experience happens. It's that in which all experience is known. And here's the third part which people struggle with. All experience is made out of consciousness. So the universe is a construct in consciousness. Before I knew about quantum physics, um, the only alternative to uh, scientific materialism, this very constricted view of the human condition, that we are really helpless. We have a situation where we are practically robots, robots with experiences. This is what today neuroscientists call human beings, we robots, philosophical robots. When you need to act day by day, we need to consult, consult our consciousness, looking for the best way to live. When we do this, when we consult our consciousness, we can feel, think, and act in an integration way. And everything that we will produce after this will be balanced.